Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson, and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at MicroMeasurements. This afternoon, my colleague, Paul Millard, who's a senior Applications Engineer, is going to help walk us through the installation of our newest data acquisition system, which is the 7100. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at uh, the installation guide that comes with the StrainSmart software. Uh, that's intended to be a step-by-step -step guide to uh, take you through the installation of not only a maintenance utility, uh, but also the StrainSmart software as well. And we're going to, this afternoon, guide you through that uh, entire process. So Paul is going to start with this PDF file that comes with the StrainSmart software that again will guide you through this installation process. And what we find is that if you follow this process in the right order, uh, in general, you can get the maintenance utility and the software installed in a matter of about 15 minutes. You know, it's intended to be basically a plug and play system. And if you stay in the right sequence, you can get that installed uh, pretty quickly. Well, the first thing that the Getting Started Guide runs us through is just a reminder of what the computer requirements are, the hardware requirements, um, reviews a little bit about the 7100 scanner. And then importantly here, it shows how that the 7100 scanners, whether it's one or more, need to go through a gigabit router uh, to be able to communicate to a PC. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do uh, is set up what's called a maintenance utility software and a lot of folks will bypass that and try to install and run StrainSmart right out of the box and fail. So if you follow the steps in this, in this getting started guide, it will show you this physical connect connectivity here using that smart router, and then walk you through what's referred to as the maintenance utility software to establish the communications between your PC and the scanner. And, and I, just to add to that, I think one of the most important parts of this is having the right router uh, to work with this hardware. It has to be a router that supports uh, DHCP and also a router that has the ability to configure LAN ports and you need enough LAN ports to support your computer as well as the number of scanners that you've got connected. Uh, with the 7100 system you could build over a thousand channel system. Uh, in our case we've got one scanner connected so we will go through the setup and configuration basically for having a single scanner connected uh, into this computer. But I would, I don't know if you'd agree with this, but um, one of the areas that our customers seem to have uh, had some issues over the, the past year or two is in that configuration of the router. So it's important that you have a router and not a switch. And it's also important that your router has the ability to support a minimum of two LAN ports, one for the PC, one for a, a single scanner. A lot of the routers come configured as WAN ports, needs to be changed over to LAN ports, and it needs to be DHCP compliant in order for all of this to work. And in, and in general, you'll have instructions that'll come with that router that if you read through it, it will, it will tell you how to configure that for those uh, LAN ports. Our router has already been configured for LAN ports. So the Getting Started guy is now referencing using the maintenance utility software. And I've, I've got these three pieces here on my desktop. One's the Getting Started guide. One of them is the CD that you typically receive with the 7100 system, and that's the maintenance utility. Of course, folks often would push that to a side and jump into the Strain Smart software because they want to get their data. But you really have to run this maintenance utility first. And inside that maintenance utility disk or download, because sometimes we send people updates mm -hmm. and upgrades and um, through Dropbox and such, or jump drive. Um, but anyways, inside there is going to be an executable that you need to locate and run the maintenance utility setup. Um, inside that maintenance utility setup, there's going to be several beneficial things. Um, the minimal one is going to be to assign the scanner, find the scanner and assign it so that StrainSmart knows where to look. Um, there's gonna be a couple other features that are gonna be offered as well regarding the firmware on the scanner, the opportunity to upgrade it. And we're also gonna spend a couple of minutes talking about how the system can perform its own calibration uh, using what we refer to as a VCAL card, which, which means a voltage calibration card. Uh, optionally, uh, excuse me, standard with the 7100, yeah. you should have received a VCAL card, 
Oh, we're installed already. So yeah. So just to <clears throat> point that out, the maintenance utilities took about twenty, maybe twenty-five seconds to install. Yeah. And um, the seventy-one hundred scanner, as Paul mentioned, comes with the VCAL card. So that means that you, as the user, can calibrate that scanner as often as you want to. Uh, typically, from the manufacturer, we'd recommend that you do it once a year. But if you want to do it once a week, once a day. Uh, it's totally your option as far as how often you calibrate it. And one of the, this has probably been one of the biggest advancements we've had in our data acquisition systems is the ability for them to be uh, field calibratable uh, by the user. Uh, back in the old days, you used to have to pack everything up and ship it to us and we'd calibrate each individual card at a time. Mm -hmm. And what that led to was uh, quite a bit of downtime. And now virtually there is no downtime uh, with the 7100 scanner. You could pull the VCAL card out, package it up, send it to us, we calibrate it for you, and you can continue to use that 7100 scanner. So again, there's virtually no downtime uh, with the 7100. It only needs to be present in the scanner when you perform the system calibration. You can move it from one VCAL card, you can move from scanner to scanner. You can even move that card to other micromeasurements data acquisition systems. So it's pretty versatile. And I'll show you a little calibration sequence here. Actually, I'm not sure if it has a, a VCAL right, card. I guess we'll, so find, we'll out. find out real quick. <laughs> um, but first, I need to find the scanner. So here's the big key, the minimal thing that you need to do in order to get Strain Smart software to work. Under the first tab that says Setups, there is an Assignments button. And the Assignment button, by default, has a scanner number in there, a serial number for a scanner in there. Oh, and it happens to be the one. The one, that, the we one got. that we got. So I um, guess we'll play the lottery. Um, purely by luck, we've got a scanner hooked up um, that's already connected. Normally what's going to happen is this green light will not be on. And whether there's a default serial number scanner in there uh, or not, this little three dots, as the, you know, the getting started guide would, would ask you to do, these, three, these little three dots are going to pop open a little convenient window. And it would allow you to search for active devices. And basically it's gonna go through that smart router and poke around and try to figure out what scanners you've got connected. It will identify it here on the right. You tell it and say, okay, hey, that's the one that I want. Here is my selected device on the left, moving it over with this green arrow. And you'd have what is appeared here. Now, if you have more than one scanner, because this will configure out quite a ways, um, you can then uh, go and ask it to go find other scanners for your secondary, tertiary scanners, etc. Okay, but right now we just have one scanner hooked up, so really it's only searching and finding that one scanner. And basically, we're done. The only thing that we had to do with the maintenance utility has been completed. I can close this out now, and I can fire up my StrainSmart software and go have fun taking data, but a word of caution, legal disclaimer and all, don't run both at the same time. Please do not run this maintenance utility and Strain Smart at the, at the same time. Close one of them out or both of them out um, because they will conflict with each other trying to control the scanner. But instead of doing that, we're going to show you the other aspects of the maintenance utility. Um, again, we've got scanner. It has a serial number 902302. Uh, it's reporting back. Uh, a device IP address that it's been assigned. Again, it supports DHCP, so it dynamically finds that IP address. Um, the, in this particular case, as we were uh, questioning amongst <laughs> ourselves, this one does not have uh, the VCAL card installed. So what that means is that the, the device is fully operational. It's just that you cannot calibrate it at this point without the VCAL card because the VCAL card, that is what's used as a reference. It injects some voltages uh, into each one of the channels and it goes through and checks uh, some gain ranges and the excitation and makes sure that it's meeting uh, its spec. And if it's not, then it will tell you that uh, when it runs that calibration report. It also stores all previous calibrations that are performed so that you can retrieve those either through this software or as a file that's on the on your PC. Um, you can, uh, it also gives you the option to save and print it out in, in, in other places as well. So it's all very much accessible. 
Um, unfortunately here, if you, if you want to see what the uh, system calibration does, it really just takes about 10 seconds or so yep. as it goes in and finds each of the channels and does exactly as, as Daryl had su suggested about the voltages. Um, a couple of the other videos that we're shooting for the system 8000 and the system 9000, we do a system calibration yeah. on those. So one, one thing to add yeah. to that before we move on from it. Uh, if you are going to be calibrating your 7100 scanner, I think it's a good idea to disconnect your inputs. In particular on a 7100 where you can have a lot of channels in a pretty dense area, that's a little bit, can be a little bit cumbersome. But the reason that I ask you to do that is that I've had customers before that have had instruments that failed calibration and it had nothing to do with the scanner, but some of their inputs had been shorted to ground. And when you have that short to ground, it could potentially short your excitation to ground, and that would force it to be uh, outside of the range, outside of the spec, because you've got a direct path to ground. So that being said, when you calibrate uh, this data acquisition system, it's a good idea to disconnect your inputs, and that way you know they have no influence uh, over the calibration. Because bad input, bad results. Exactly. Okay. So the last thing I just wanted to highlight here too is that the opportunity to upgrade firmware, whether it's because you've got an older scanner or we introduce an, an, an update, um, this tab right here would walk you through the ability to update the firmware on the scanners. So, but as I said before, even before the firmware update or the cal system calibration, um, I've got the uh, scanner uh, assignment completed. It knows uh, what's out, it, it knows that the scanner's out there and it's online. So I should be good to go in the sense that I can close out my maintenance utility software and I can now install or, and or fire up uh, StrainSmart. So that last folder, which would be the last disk, another disk that you typically would receive from us. As of the shooting of this videotape, we've got version 1.4.3 um, for StrainSmart for the 7100. And there's an executable there that uh, you just take a moment or two to uh, fire it up and get it running. Uh, and it'll install the software. Now, one of the things that uh, people often get uh, held up by at this point is local permissions. So it might be a healthy practice to try to right click and run as an administrator, uh, both the installation and the StrainSmart software. Uh, if you're not sure about just what level of permissions you've got locally on your PC. And a lot of the times when we get calls from folks in terms of the crashing and things that happen with the software, it ties back to that the lack of local permissions on the PC. Subsequently, we have a lot of customers that secure PCs that are exclusive to, the, to a, a one of our data acquisition systems, doesn't go on a network, doesn't go on, on the internet, um, and we're done. That was quick. Okay, yeah. so StrainSmart is installed now at this point. Yeah, it probably took about 25 seconds maybe. Yeah. Maybe even quicker. Yeah. And to Paul's point, uh, if you're not a local administrator, you need to get those privileges. Uh, it'll save you a lot of time and aggravation later on. So I would encourage you to reach out to your IT department. Maybe they come and they log on as themselves where they do have local admin privileges to get it installed. Uh, or they give you a temporary pass, if you will, for local admin privileges. But you do need to be a local administrator to get this uh, system up and running. Um, so, you know, take a few minutes, try to find out if you're not sure, contact your IT department and see if they can uh, help you with that. I'd say that easily the majority of the, the problems, the root causes of the lack of connect connectivity, I'd say more than half of them are the router and the rest of them are pretty much local, local permissions, IT issues. Yep. So I've got the uh, StrainSmart fired up and running. As you may have seen, it, it did, did some handshaking to figure out what hardware it has out there, and it starts me off with actually a, an already existing file. But um, at this point, the proof in the pudding is going to be down here in the corner. By default, it doesn't connect until you're ready and ask it to. And then this little button right here that says connect is going to tell me whether or not we succeeded in getting everything set up. Um, in this particular case, it's, it's doing some handshaking again to make sure that everything is, is well uh, established to communicate with the scanner and to be able to start creating sensors, creating assignments, and bang, we are connected. Green is good. Green's good. Green's good. So at this point, I am ready to be able to go and, and create sensors, create assignments, create scan sessions, and take data. Um, so, so let me give you, a, a, I guess, a quick summary. So. Uh, we went through, looked at the PDF file, 
that is uh, uh, provided with the Strain Smart software that's intended to be a getting started guide. Uh, we did an installation of the 7100 Mainnet's utility. And Paul walked us through that and the different aspects of it where you can get it communicating and calibrate and also update firmware if needed. Uh, and then we did an installation of Strain Smart. And really, uh, if you follow it in the right order, you should be able to get it installed within about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, if, if you do run into issues, um, I would encourage you to reach out to us. Um, we have a, a staffed applications engineering department that's here to help you. Um, so if you'd like to find out more information or uh, if you find that you need some technical support, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to us through the website at www.micro-measurements.com or by picking up the phone and calling us at 919-365-3800 and follow the prompts till you get to Applications Engineering and Paul or myself or one of the other Applications Engineers would be happy to help you. Anything else you want to add to that? Nope, looks good. I think we covered everything we needed to. Thank you. Thank you.